Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'd like to introduce you folks to Microsoft Word 2016. So this is going to be an absolute tutorial for beginners. It's not going to include everything in Microsoft Word. Obviously it's a very complex piece of software and there's a lot of things that can go into it. But we can focus on the main aspects, the core that every single user, more or less, is going to need to use. So you don't necessarily need to worry about all those complex features. Instead, in this video, we're going to be focusing on these bullet points here, including creating and opening documents, typing text onto the screen, which is going to have an emphasis on creating paragraphs, bullets like these, titles, um, and in titles and creating bullets and those kind of things, Stylizing your text or assigning styles to them allows them to display differently, and that is an important aspect of Microsoft Word. We'll also be looking at changing fonts, size, bold, uh, it italics, and underlining um, your font or your text. Now, there's other attributes you can assign to text, but those are the main ones that pretty much everybody uses. Uh, also, headings as a bookmarks and, uh, and creating an automatic table of contents. I think that's a pretty useful thing if you're ever going to be making a report or an ebook, anything of that kind of nature. Automatic um, basically links to further on in your document will be pretty helpful. We'll also talk about changing your design, which is the overall appearance of your document. So you can change everything at once rather than a style only applying to... Uh, one specific group of things like headings. Uh, page margins, assigning page margin margins if you're trying to follow a specific format like AMA or uh, MLA, then um, defining your page margins and making it so that the text is only a certain distance from the side of the paper, that's uh, going to be important. And then the spell and grammar check, which is a indispensable tool Everybody makes spelling and grammar mistakes, and Microsoft Word is pretty good at helping you through that. So to get started, we're going to go up to the File menu to create a new document. Uh, with this New tab, that's what we're looking for. You can either start with a completely blank document, which is probably what most people are going to do in most cases, but if you like to get a head start, you can also use one of these mini templates over to the right and down below. And you're not just limited to these templates, but you can also search online where a myriad of people have created uh, templates that the whole idea of a template is just to get you started, basically setting up the design of uh, the document before you even start typing. So when you use a template, your focus is mostly on adding the information rather than the design of the document. So if you're not very good at design, templates are a very good tool, but for right now, I'm just going to go over and start a new blank document. Now, as you would expect to add text to the screen, you simply need to type letters on your keyboard. Pretty self-explanatory. So I can go ahead and do something like heading one, enter to create a new paragraph, heading two, and then on the third line, instead of just calling it heading, I'm going to say something like the fox jumped over the moon. I really enjoy a fine piece of cheesecake. And let's add a little bit more text just to get it to loop to the next line. So, so long as I have cheesecake, I will not be sad. A fine artistic paragraph if I've ever seen one. Now, while paragraph can simply be created by hitting enter on your keyboard, a bullet point is not quite as simple. In order to start a new bulleted list or a numbered list, you can go up here to the paragraph section in the home tab. So bulleted lists is the one in the top left corner where you see dots. It doesn't have to be dots. If you click on the drop down menu, you can see that there are many different types of bullets you can use, such as these arrows. Alternatively, you can go to the numbered list and the main difference between a numbered list and a bulleted list is that with a numbered list, each item on your list has a unique identifier that you can search by and that you can use to identify the item. Whereas the bulleted list, as you'll see here, I'll just type one, two, three, the bullet has nothing to do with the item. It's just an indication that there's a new item, but it doesn't 
uh, keep them organized in any other way other than the way you typed it. Now, as for creating a title for your document, you may actually want to do this on a completely separate new page. So in order to move everything on this page down to the second one, I'm going to hit control enter and that causes a page break. So what a page break means is that all of the content that comes after that page break is forced onto the second or further on pages. And that means everything before it is going to be left on its own. So I can go hit enter a few times and then maybe we type the title of this document. Now it'll be a title in our minds, but it's not going to be listed as a title inside of the document itself, not until we assign a style. So I shall call this the tutorial to end them all, I guess. <laughs> it's more fun that way. And in the styles section over here to the right beyond paragraph, we can take this text and assign it the style of a title. Now, why these styles are significant is that every single paragraph or line that is assigned with this style will change with the style itself. So it's a template for different paragraphs or lines on your document. So if I go up to this, uh, this title style and I click modify, anything I change here is going to affect this title and anything else I've assigned as a title inside of the document. So if I change the font size here to 42 and hit OK, it applies to that title and every other title. Now, if you want to manually change font size, as we talked about doing, uh, you can do that by going over to the font section just with the uh, content that you want to change selected. So with this selected, um, I can just click the drop down for the font size, which you'll see by the number, and choose a number like 18. Now that doesn't change the normal style, which you can see that this paragraph is assigned to, um, but rather it just changes what's selected. The same thing applies if I change the font over here so I can change the font of this specific paragraph by having it selected and uh, clicking the drop down. But if I wanted to change the font of all paragraphs with the normal style, then I would have to right click that and go to modify as I did with title. Now, a couple more styles that are really important are headings. So you can see that I can apply uh, heading one really easily just by selecting the heading one and heading two text and just selecting the heading style. But what you'll notice that popped up on the left is navigation. So whenever you make something have the style of a heading, it's going to put a reference or basically a link to that specific spot in your document in the navigation. And this is the same thing that gets um, used when you are automatically creating a table of contents. So if I want to create a table of contents really quick, all I would need to do is hit control enter to do a page break, go back up here to page two, maybe call it table of contents. Actually, I'm not even sure this part's necessary, but I can go over to the references tab and then click table of contents. And there are a few automatic options. I think I kind of like uh, automatic table two. It's only mildly different than automatic table one. So we'll just do that. You can of course get more uh, custom designs for your table of contents from online. But here I'll just choose automatic table two. And yeah, I didn't even have to type in table of contents because everything here is completely automated. So it knows the page number where that heading one is on and it has uh, the page number for heading two as well. And if I go down, we can confirm that uh, both of those are on page uh, three. Now, beyond creating a quick design for your document, the real strength of the table of contents is that you can have it update automatically by clicking this update table button here. Now, there's nothing to update currently, but if I create a page break on page three to push the heading one and two down to the next page, then now that they are on the fourth page, we would want to update this. So I can go back up to the table of contents, click update, uh, update page numbers only or the entire table, whichever is relevant to your current situation. And you can see, bam, updates to page four. And I didn't even have to look at what page it was actually on because Microsoft Word knows for us.
Now say that in Microsoft Word you're working with this default design and you just don't like the look of the font choice. Maybe you want something a little bit more stylized or just different. We can go over to the design tab where we can select from one of many default themes that will change how the text displays for the titles, the headings, the paragraphs, and pretty much everything in your document. So if I just go to this fifth one here, black and white capitalized, uh, that's going to apply to everything in the document. Now we do have a problem with this paragraph down here, the one we customized on our own without modifying the style uh, directly. We instead just manually changed this paragraph. So if we want this to adjust to the new style rather than having its own custom setup, we just go over to styles again, hit normal, and it's going to change into whatever is considered normal for this theme. Another way of looking at it is that whenever you make custom changes, it overrides whatever your theme is saying that that paragraph or heading should be. Now, especially important for students, as I mentioned, page margins, they are not very difficult to go ahead and change. You simply go over to the layout tab and there's going to be margins here. If you click it, it's going to give you a drop down menu. You can have one inch margins on all sides, uh, 0.5 inch, or you can even come down here to custom margins if none of the default options fit your needs. And then you can manually type in top, left, bottom, and right margins. Now, from what I recall of being a student, it's usually the same on all sides. So you would simply need to do something like put 1.5 inches using your keyboard, of course, 1.5 inches, 1.5 inches, 1.5 inches, or whatever the specific format you're going for calls for. But to demonstrate one of the automatic changes, I'll just go to narrow margins and you can see that the margins indicated by these tr uh, these uh, right angles on the top left, bottom left, top right and bottom right um, move and the text on my page moves with it. The reason for that is that simply with smaller margins, there's more space on the page for the text to occupy. Last up in this video, we'll talk about the spell check tool. You can access spell check by hitting F7 on your keyboard at any time. It's a very useful shortcut. But here I'm going to intentionally misspell a word. So let's go with grease, but give it three E's. And you can see immediately that it gives a red underline indicating that Microsoft Word believes that that word is misspelled incorrectly. But even Microsoft Word with its massive English dictionary can sometimes get it wrong. And that's why it doesn't automatically change it for you. Maybe you want it misspelled or maybe you are using the uh, proper spelling of a word because it's a specific title or something of that nature. So we can also go to the review tab and hit spelling and grammar. It's the same thing as hitting F7 on your keyboard. I'll click it over here just so you can see. And it's going to pop up the spelling and grammar check tool over here on the right. Now, in this case, it's spelling because obviously I misspelled the word. Um, actually, I misspelled the word pretty badly. It has an A in it, not two E's. My bad. Um, so when you find the correct spelling of the word you're going for, you simply select it from the list and hit change. Likewise, the same kind of thing will appear with grammar mistakes. Instead, they'll be underlined by green, but it will give you the same series of suggestions on how you can fix the writing of your document. Now, naturally, that's not everything in Microsoft Word 2016, but I hope that this brief tutorial has gotten you introduced to the concept of using the program. It's an excellent tool. Many people all around the world use it to write their documents, reports, all types of things. So I've been Chris. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in my future videos.